Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Brandon again. Today, I want to talk about a very interesting bar from Titan Fitness, which is their Blues City Olympic Bar, in this case in Bronze Cerakote, which is one of two barbells that they've recently released that are manufactured here in the USA. And it's interesting because Titan Fitness is usually known for a couple of things when they come up in conversation. Number one, they're affordable options. Number two, they're usually affordable because they're imported from overseas. And then also number three, that a lot of their products tend to mimic and or copy what Rogue Fitness is doing. So whereas Rogue is really well known for being made in the USA, outside of their plates, of course, Titan Fitness is known for being a cheaper, more affordable option, which usually tends to be outsourced from overseas. So it's interesting to see them dipping their toes in the water to have some USA manufactured pieces of equipment. Now, I can't do this video without talking about Rogue. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. So for those of you out there that don't like the Titan versus Rogue debate, I gotta do it. Number one is because most people, whenever I do a video on one of these companies, they always bring up the other in the comment section below. So if I do a Titan review, people say, hey, Rogue made this first and it's made better, it's made in the USA, it's worth paying the extra money for. If I do a Rogue video, people are like, oh, Titan makes the same thing, but it's cheaper because it comes from China. You should go with that version. And when it comes to this bar and a lot of the equipment, there's no denying that it's very similar to what the other company offers. So for instance, if I were to give you a general overview of this bar, which is it's a bar that's kind of their marquee barbell that's named after the city where they're from, which happens to be 28 and a half millimeters, 190 K PSI, 86.75 inches, has dual neural marks, it's offered in Cerakote, you could really be talking about this Blue City Olympic bar, or you could be talking about the Rogue Ohio bar. So both things are true in that regard. I mentioned that Titan also came out with a second barbell, which happens to be their Blue City Power Bar, which shares the exact same things as the Rogue Ohio Power Bar. So again, I don't think there's any denying what Titan is after when they go after these markets. They're typically looking to offer what Rogue does, but at a more affordable price. I say that because I said typically, now that they're starting to get into the USA market, things are starting to change just a little bit. So again, I would say that this bar compares directly to the Ohio bar, or at least it's meant to compete with it. However, the list price on this particular barbell is $340, whereas the Rogue Ohio bar in Cerakote is $325. Now, truth be told, you probably will never pay full price for a Titan piece of equipment because they're always running some sort of sale, usually anywhere from 10 to 20% off. Not to mention they have a loyalty program or as you buy stuff, you build up points, which can then be applied to buying new stuff. So I think on average, this bar will probably sell for right around $300. So it is cheaper, but if we're talking about strictly MSRP, this bar is more expensive than the Rogue variant, which is like the first time I think that's ever happened in Titan's history. So again, as I said, a very interesting bar. Now, I wanna talk about this bar in general, but before I do, I do have to give a few caveats. I do own a Rogue Ohio bar. I do own a Rogue Ohio power bar as well. I'm gonna be referencing those a little bit this video. But for the way I train, which if you've seen my videos before, is mostly geared towards powerlifting. So this barbell, the specs it has being a little bit thinner diameter at a 20 and a half, being the fact that it does not have a center neural, so there's no center neural here, it has dual neural marks as I mentioned, and the knurling on these bars are typically what I would consider to be more medium to passive, is not something I usually prefer. But I think I'm well enough equipped to talk about this particular bar in the video, because as I mentioned, I've used other bars that kind of fit this same space, so to say. But a couple of my personal preferences will probably air their head during this video. So let's talk about the bar itself. First of all, the color, this is the bronze Cerakote. The Blue City Olympic bar is only offered in Cerakote, whereas the Ohio bar is offered in Bear Steel, Stainless Steel, Cerakote, I think black zinc as well. We have a lot more options when it comes to that. Cerakote tends to be very popular with a lot of people these days because you can do some pretty unique things like with the color. So for example, bronze, interesting color. Not sure it'd be my first choice. I think they also have a blue bar, a black bar, and a pink bar. I probably would have preferred one of those, but Titan was nice enough to send me this particular bar for review. Uh, but you can also do a lot of unique designs with it. And Cerakote looks really good holds up really well, especially when you talk about oxidation and rust and things of that nature. It's very resistant to a lot of those things, so it's very appealing for people. So as I said, it's a very popular finish these days. Now again, personal preference here coming through, I'm not a huge fan of Cerakote. I think it looks great, but I think its application is not the best for what you want it for. Because when we start taking a look at the other things on this bar, namely the knurling, which being someone who likes powerlifting and grip is extremely important, both for my hands, or if you have a center neural on your back for squats, I like an aggressive knurling and a good feel of the bar itself. I spent my time in commercial gyms with slippery bars, 
I never want to go back there again. And the problem to me with Cerakote is that it really fills in the neural much more so in fact than my experience than black zinc or chrome or any other type of plating or finish you might have on your barbell. Now, if I had a preference, it would either be bare steel or stainless steel. I think those offer the best feeling of the neural itself because there's no extra coating. But if you're gonna go Cerakote, I think the manufacturer needs to go even more aggressive with the neural with knowing that it's going to be muted some by Cerakoting on top of it. So this particular bar has medium neural, even somewhat passive neural to begin with. And then when you add the Cerakote on top of it, it makes it even more muted. So to me, this bar is not a very good feeling bar for grip and probably one of the biggest downsides to it. Now, again, if they offered this in other versions, I might be able to give you some feedback on if those were better. But if you take a look at a quick comparison up, up close on the neural, you can see even the neural pattern is much, much different. So if we were gonna compare this to let's say my Rogue Ohio stainless steel bar, it's a night and day difference between the two. But even if you take a look at some of the pictures provided by Rogue for their Cerakote version, you can see that the knurling is a little bit deeper, thus going to be a little bit better feeling even with the Cerakote in play. So the knurl here is very passive. So keep that in mind if you're looking for this bar. You also have dual knurl marks. Personally speaking, I will only use the powerlifting ones, which are the ones that are closer in. But if you're doing any kind of Olympic style lifting, that might be important to you to make sure you can place your hands in the right spot. As we go out to the sleeves itself, typically if you're doing Olympic lifting, you want good sleeve spin. This bar does not have good sleeve spin. I'm gonna show you a quick example here of what it looks like. And if I contrast this to my Rogue Ohio Power Bar, so a bar that's not supposed to have good sleeve spin, you can see it's really a night and day difference between that two. Now it is probably two, I could take the sleeves off here and oil them up, grease them up, and really try to get them spinning well. I don't think that should be the case for a new barbell, however, so the spin here leaves something to be desired if you're so interested in using a bar for that kind of feel and feature. Now the sleeves itself are ribbed a little bit too, but what I found is the ribbing is really inconsistent, especially kind of nearer to the collar. As you get further out towards the end, you'll actually notice that the sleeves are beveled in a little bit. I don't think this adds any functionality outside of maybe if you have really tight tolerance on plates and you tend to kind of bump them getting on, which I've never really had a problem with, but I do like the beveling of the sleeves. I think that's a nice little touch. You have a nice little end cap on the end denoting what the bar is. So again, there's not a lot to say about this in terms of what it is. If I were to do a video on the Rogue Ohio bar, which I could probably do since I have one, a lot of the actual specs are going to be similar. What's different is going to be the spin of the actual sleeves, the feel of the neural. But if you're so inclined to get this bar, it's an interesting option. But here's where the conversation really gets interesting to me is the fact that again, in most cases, when someone's looking at Titan versus Rogue, they tend to go with Titan for the aspects of it being more affordable and a very similar feeling product. Now, in terms of similar feel, it's kind of there. Again, there's some shortcomings. The sleeves could spin better. The knurling could be more aggressive. But where this bar really falls short is the price point. As I mentioned, MSRP is actually higher than what you'd get for the Rogue version. And I think it's actually gonna drive a lot of people away. Even though I did mention that oftentimes with Titan, you can get this for sale and you're probably gonna pay more around $300 or so. The price difference between this bar and a bar from Rogue, even with shipping, is probably gonna be around $50. And I think most people will probably end up eating that $50 to go for the better overall bar. So while I'm very happy that Titan's starting to get into the US manufacturing market, I think they kind of missed the point on this a little bit. But one of the things that I've noticed with Titan is they're usually pretty good about taking feedback and a lot of the products that come out and don't do very well is they take that feedback and release a version two and that version two is almost always superior to what it was supposed to be. So like for instance, most notably their safety squat bar, which recently came out, which is one of the best deals you can get. They just announced they came out with a brand new Buffalo style bar, which actually looks pretty legit as opposed to their laughable first attempt at a Buffalo bar. So I think they might eventually get this right. But as of now for this gen one blue city Olympic bar, my suggestion is probably pass on this one. But if you think different or think I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section below. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.